Ideas.com podcast. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of InvestorIdeas.com podcast. In today's podcast, we're going to be looking at a few public and private company announcements from Speakeasy Cannabis Club Limited, trading on the CSE as easy, Iconic Farms Incorporated, Village Farms International Incorporated, trading on the NASDAQ and the TSX as VFF, as well as Green Lane Holdings Incorporated, trading on the NASDAQ as GNLN. So first starting with Speakeasy Cannabis Club Limited, who announced one of the largest single outdoor cannabis crops in Canadian history. So summer at Rock Creek to date has been warm and dry, allowing the plants to enjoy an uninterrupted period of vigorous growth. And with planting completed since mid-July, Speakeasy has shifted its focus to preparations for harvest, which is expected to begin in a few short weeks. Founder Mark Green states, I'm happy to report that plants are looking very green and healthy, and the team is busy preparing for harvest this fall, which we believe will be one of the largest single legal outdoor cannabis harvests in Canada ever, and the excitement around here is palpable. Now, summer of 2020 in southern BC has lived up to its reputation so far, delivering both long, hot, dry days with plenty of sunshine, a great combination for growing strong, healthy plants. With their incredible genetics and perfect climate, Speakeasy expects a bumper crop starting early this fall. Now, in approximately five weeks, the harvest will begin, and free of the ailments at this stage, the plants look beautiful and healthy. Bud production is in full swing and coming along on schedule, and the use of three different cannabis varieties and three different planting styles will extend the duration of harvest, allowing for them to manageable amount of daily harvest. Now, Mark Green also stated, bud development is progressing very well, and the pungent aroma of spicy fruit is filling the air. For any farmer, the harvest season is always exciting, a year's worth of effort finally paying off, and worrying of having a crop in the field finally coming in is a huge relief. Now, the 10,000 things all having to happen and happen at the right time to have a successful crop is a daunting task, looking at them from the beginning of the season. But walking through the field, seeing the fruits of our labor makes every long day, late night, struggle, frustration, and bruise and blister all worth it. And I wish everyone could experience a strong stroll through a blooming, sweet-smelling cannabis field on a warm, late summer evening, and it's truly magical. Uh, now, with market conditions changing and growing and consumers becoming more discerning, the importance of Speakeasy's outdoor crop becomes clearer. The bulk of the outdoor crop is perfect for creating concentrates and value-added products, a fast-growing section in the Canadian market. The high-quality, cost-effective input material we'll have in a, shoe for a few short weeks is only possible because of our climate genetics and knowledgeable growers that put it all together. We believe that this material will allow us to enter into any segment of the market with a price and quality advantage, say the founder, Mark Green. Uh, so organic or sorry outdoor grows um, have definitely been a thing that we saw a little bit last year uh, 48 North Cannabis being one of the big companies few others within that space having some fairly large outdoor crops obviously speakeasy now doing one of the larger ones this year um, and really I think we're going to continue to see more of this whether in Canada or the US or internationally um, in climates and conditions where outdoor growing is possible uh, you're going to see more and more of that where you can get again larger plant yields um, there obviously are risks and downsides to doing the outdoor grows, uh, but overall, especially when looking at the distillate sort of second generation product market, uh, this is a pretty cost effective and easy production method for getting uh, sort of your raw materials for any of those next generation products. I do think that you're going to see more companies start to have a combination of outdoor grows in tandem with their indoor facilities. I think that every company, whether they're in the climate uh, or if they are in the climate that's sort of agreeable to cannabis plants, they should be doing a combination of both at this point. Um, just again, to compete with some of the bulk price points that are going to be out there. Again, especially looking at the international competition, which is starting to get a little bit more real now. Um, as again, you're starting to see a lot of these Colombian companies actually receive their export licenses and bring whether it's CBD isolate or even some THC isolates uh, to different parts of the world. I do think that the outdoor growing is going to be a necessity for a lot of these companies. So this definitely speaks towards that trend picking up in Canada. Um, and I would expect to see, again, more ideas or more, more concepts like this uh, showing up both in Canada and the U.S. over the next couple of years. And hopefully this does continue to be an efficient method of growing outdoors. Uh, and I do hope that most of these companies are also going to be looking at diversifying the strains they're going to be using for their outdoor growth. So that way there is less risk of um, overall contamination with sort of crop pests and everything. Next, we're looking at Iconic Farms Incorporated's wholly owned Canolumbian subsidiary of the company Pedeca SAS, who announced the results of its COVID-19 study conducted by a third-party laboratory using agronomically certified genetics cultivated in Casa Flores, the Pedeca's state-of-the-art cannabis camp located in Colombia. 
We are pleased to announce the results of our COVID-19 study and the positive implications to the virus replication cycle, stated Brian Baca, the CEO of Icanic Farms. Now, the company provided the University of Antiquias Immune Virology Group with samples of micro multiple agronomically certified strains cultivated at Casa Flores, and the analysis was conducted by the UDEA and concluded that the strains inhibited up to 62.5% of SARS-CoV-2. Now, the testing was conducted by the UDEA's Immune Virology Group in the first A1 Biosafe Laboratory to determine the antiviral activity of cannabinoids and the SARS uh, VOC2 isolated virus. Now, the university carried out two groups of experiments following the international methodology used to determine the antiviral effects of compounds for the mitigation of SARS CoV 2. Now, in the first group of experiments, the original dose of the derivatives in which the viability of healthy cells grows in the uh, Vero E6 culture medium obtained was determined to be above international standards of 20% acceptance of cytotoxicity. Experimentation with cannabis products sought out 100% normal cell viability. Now, in the second group of experiments, the antiviral activity of cannabis derivatives on the SARS CoV 2 virus was established applying the preventative and optimal dose of the products obtained in the cytotoxicity experiments, and negative and positive controls were implemented, serving to correct the antiviral effect of cannabis derivatives by plate testing. Now, the SARS-CoV-2 viral title was determined after treatment with cannabis measurement and the reduction resulting from the cannabis derivatives, and the title obtained was 4.2 times 106 UFP plate-forming units per milliliter. Now, a microbiological test was also conducted on the provided samples and showed no presence of pathogenic fungi or bacteria, which is a requirement as set forth by the European Pharmacopoeia, Europe's legal and scientific benchmark for pharmacopoeia standards. We're excited to collaborate with the UDEA as the first academic institution in Colombia to isolate the virus, and we will continue our research internationally in hopes to discover a viable cannabinoid solution for the current global crisis, said Bora Sanz de Madrid, the president of Icanic International. Um, so obviously, I've been talking about different companies focusing on some form of cannabinoid-based treatment for COVID-19 over the past few months. Um, you've seen most of these companies just starting to enter into a research and development phase or doing laboratory testing. So Icanic Farms now moving into some of their phases of testing as well. Um, again, I really don't expect to see any sort of products or real results from this until maybe late to next year. Um, and that's just going to be how it's going to play out most likely for this industry as again even though there are some successful results they've seen with cannabinoid based treatments with regards to anti-inflammation and overall immune system boosting um, i don't think you're going to see some sort of re actual real cure or um, real efficacious results for reducing covid 19 in anyone um, through cannabinoid based treatment until these products are really sussed out for a long time and again you actually have the research and laboratory testing to back it up um, that also depends on, again, the scale of sort of COVID as it progresses throughout the year, if you're going to see another huge resurgence, if that will slow down research or increase it, um, there's going to be a lot of factors that come into play here. But I do think that the smarter play for most of these companies is to focus more so on dealing with some of the side effects of COVID-19. So dealing with the overall um, anti-inflammation and assistance with your immune system boosting is really the only play most of these companies should be making as opposed to trying to look for some sort of actual cure or vaccine through cannabinoid based treatment. I feel like that's a bit of a far stretch and also that the medical community will be skeptical as they already are of most cannabinoid based medicines. Um, so I feel like again the easier sort of prospect is focusing on like CBD treatment and immune system boosting um, and also some of the companies have made hand sanitizers and different products that again are focusing on specific elements of COVID-19 and specifically treating uh, sort of minor uh, results I guess of COVID-19. Uh, next looking at Village Farms International who announced that its majority owned joint venture for large scale low cost high quality cannabis production Pure Sun Farms has begun shipping its first cannabis 2.0 and bottled oil products and shipments will initially be to BC with shipments to Ontario and Alberta planned to begin shortly. At Pure Sun Farms, flour is at the core of what we do and it's our growing experience and commitment to quality that's really inspired our evolution into Cannabis 2.0, said Mandesh Desange, President and CEO of Pure Sun Farms. All Pure Sun Farms vape and oil products are made from our naturally grown signature strains, always using the best parts of the flour to provide a safe and smooth experience from start to finish. Now, Mr. Desange added, Pure Sun Farms has taken a pragmatic, thoughtful, and measured approach to our product strategy, first establishing a commanding position in the dried flower market, and then leveraging our brand, reputation, and experience to enter new, large, high-quality, higher-value product categories. 
Now, vapes have already become the second largest category within the Ontario Cannabis Store. After dried flower and bottled oils are the fourth largest category with the OCS after dried flower vapes and pre-rolls. Now, for three consecutive quarters since first launching its brand of retail products last September, Pure Sun Farms has had the leading market share of all the dried flower brands in Canada's largest provincial market, Ontario, said Michael DeGiglio, the chief executive officer of Village Farms. Now, Pure Sun Farms will bring the same winning value proposition that underpins their performance, high-quality products that consumers want and an attractive price, to its Cannabis 2.0 and bottled oil products. And we are confident consumers will embrace these new products as enthusiastically as they have the Pure Sun Farms dried flower products. And Pure Sun Farms' goal is to be the number one or number two brand in every product category that it has entered. Uh, Pure Sun Farms vape cartridges feature full-spectrum extract, which preserves the cannabinoids and terpenes from the original flower and maintains the aromas and flavors true to the cultivar. And Pure Sun Farms Full Spectrum Vapes feature 0.5 grams of single-strain BC-grown cannabis extract and are available in three of their best-selling strains, the Afghan Kush, White Rhino, and Island Honey. Uh, and Pure Sun Farms Pure Sun CBD Oil is also made in purely BC-grown whole flower Pure Sun CBD cultivar, aka Canatonic, and selected for its unique potential to produce consistent CBD-rich flowers. And Pure Sun CBD oils come in a 30 milliliter amber bottle and is available in both a 1 to 10 or 1 to 30 THC to CBD formulation. So con- consumers can customize their CBD experience to meet their individual needs. Uh, now, Pure Sun Farms has done really well within the dry flower market. I've talked about that a couple of times. Uh, they really have done a great job of dominating certain markets, especially in Ontario, doing quite well in BC and Alberta as well. Um, and you've seen them really maintain consistency and been one of the better flower brands that's come from start to finish so far. Uh, they didn't have a lot of those sort of startup issues with really over dried or inconsistent product out of the gate. And they've maintained a lot of their um, product inventory levels as well in most of the provinces. So you haven't seen them just get disappeared from shelves, which has been a big problem for a lot of the pre-roll or um, dry flower brands as they haven't been able to maintain a consistent inventory. So Pearson Farms has done as good of a job as I can expect for most of these companies when it comes to maintaining consistency and establishing itself as a brand. I don't know if that will translate into the vape cartridges as again, there still is a real, real lack of brand awareness for most consumers within the Canadian market. Um, But At least most people would probably recognize some of their packaging by now and at least recognize some of the products that have been out there. Choosing from their most popular strains is obviously a smart play. And again, I would expect them to have a pretty decent competitive level within this space. Um, That being said, though, they are a little bit behind when it comes to entering the 2.0 product categories. And a lot of these companies are moving on to sort of even third generation products already uh, where you're starting to see changes in how the delivery features are coming out for some of these cannabis products. Um, that being said, I do think they'll do quite well for now, at least within BC and Ontario, definitely something to pay attention to and see how they compete against some of the other more major players within that space. Obviously Valens group being one of the most uh, competitive players within the cartridge and distillate space out there. Um, but I do expect Pure Sun Farms to start having a significant share within that market as their products hit the market. Lastly, today looking at Green Lane Holdings, who announced the launch of one of its first responsibly sourced machine manufactured pre-roll cones on the market. Now Green Lane's new line of pre-rolled cones are available in three different cone blends, either rice, natural brown, and organic hemp. And the cones are made with the highest quality organically sourced paper, exclusively processed in France and sealed with 100% natural Arabic gum. And the cone comes in three sizes, one and a quarter, slim, and king. Now unlike other cones on the market, which are rolled by hand, Green Lane's pre-rolled cones are made from patent-pending proprietary precision manufacturing machinery, and this modern manufacturing technique offers many advantages, including increased production efficiency and economies of scale. It also ensures the precise construction of each cone, resulting in less gum and overage of the flap seam. Now, Green Lane cones use paper material manufactured in an ISO 9000 compliant facility, using responsibly sourced materials and adhering to stringent manufacturing standards, all while ensuring quality and competitive pricing. Green Lane's pre-rolled cones are exclusively available through bulk odors and can be delivered in two to six weeks, depending on volume. After a considerable amount of R&D, Green Lane is proud to introduce one of the most precise and high-quality pre-rolled cones to the market, said Aaron Lacasio, the co-founder and CEO of Green Lane Holdings. 
We remain committed to providing trustworthy and innovative products that will enhance the cannabis consumption experience for our diverse array of consumers. Um, so Greenly in there, going to be pumping out the first mass manufactured cones onto the market. Um, obviously, cones and pre-rolls and papers are still a massive part with of the cannabis accessories and uh, again, goes hand in hand with the dried flower sales within the cannabis retail. You are seeing a lot of people move towards pre-rolled cones as a lot of people are just done with rolling and want ease of access in a simpler format. Uh, because of this, lots of your cone brands that are on the market, for instance, your raw um, elements, other similar brands are all getting sort of out of stock with most of the retail suppliers due to the fact that these are still hand rolled. They're not mass produced in the same way. Um, and again, a lot of them are having difficulties with their supply lines, which are a lot of them based out of China. So this is a smart play for Greenlane as they have done a good job of building out their house of brands and are obviously paying attention to what's going on within the retail accessories market and seeing that there's an opportunity to start taking over the cone market as again, people aren't really that concerned with certain paper brands at the moment, at least for the average consumer. Um, and so people will most of the time take simply what's available if Greenlane brand becomes the most consistently available brand that companies can get. Uh, then that's where you're going to see start to dominate the market. Similarly to when THC Biomed pumped out their uh, mass-produced pre-rolls, uh, so they have their 10 packs, nice slim sort of cigarette-style pre-roll joints um, that are much cheaper and much more cost-effective for them to pump out. Those have really started doing well within most of the cannabis retail spaces that they're in in Canada, doing really well in BC. Um, that's mostly where they're in right now, but in other provinces where you're starting to see them enter, that format is picking up a lot of momentum. Again, not just for the price point, but also for the uh, sort of ease of preference. A lot of people like those slim, uh, I think they're like 0.2 gram joints uh, that are just a nice, easy sort of one hitter style to some extent. Um, and similarly to how that production technique helped them start entering and being a competitor within the pre-roll space, I do expect this to happen for Greenlane within the cone space that they will start to at least be a competitor. Whether or not they dominate it or sort of take over will be up to the other companies to see if they adapt fast enough to keep up with the current market demands, which for a lot of these cannabis accessory companies, they are not able to keep up with right now. A lot of production uh, as well as supply chain issues are showing up all over Canada and in North America when it comes to the accessories market as again a huge percentage of their supply chains are based out of China and this is a part where Greenland could as a company that's mostly based out of North America and does have their own production facilities start to jump away from other some of the other well-known brands within the space um, as again they're not going to be able to uh, keep up with some of these new technology innovations that's all for today's podcast enjoy the rest of your Wednesday that's all for today's podcast. Podcast is now a certified word trademark on the blockchain through Cognate Incorporated CM certification. InvestorIdeas.com podcasts are also available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and TuneIn. If you'd like to be a guest or sponsor of this podcast, please contact InvestorIdeas.com. Investor Ideas reminds all listeners to read our disclaimers and disclosures on the InvestorIdeas.com website. And this podcast is not an endorsement to buy products or services or securities. Investors are reminded that all investments involve risk and possible loss of investment. Investor Ideas does not condone the use of cannabis except where permissible by law. Our site does not possess, distribute, or sell cannabis products.